And last but not least, we have Group 8 with Staff Motion Efficiency and Timescales. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are the last project on star formation efficiency and time scales globally to 100 parsec scales. Uh, this was supervised by Brent and Melanie. Yeah, so first, uh, a motivation. So what is a star formation? Everybody, everybody knows. Uh, star formation is, is the process in which gas is converted into stars. And where does it happen? It happens in, in cold and dense regions where gas converts into stars, right? So uh, we are interested in this uh, in this work in a star formation efficiency, which uh, links uh, both questions, right? So uh, we define a star formation efficiency as the the lifetime of the regions where a star formation happens, uh, for example, giant molecular clouds, uh, divided by the depletion time. That is the time that uh, would take for consume all gas in these regions. So um, yeah, we have the molecular cloud line, <laughs> we have the depletion time. And now uh, we are going to calculate this, uh, these time scales uh, for, a, like, I think, like four or five galaxies. And we are going to estimate uh, the star formation efficiency. So in order to compute the star formation efficiency, we are going to make use of 19 nearby galaxies thanks to FANGs. So the, these near, nearby galaxies, 19 nearby galaxies, they have the distances lower than 20 megaparsecs. And one characteristic is they're mostly phase zone. So that way we avoid to observe only the edge. So our, our parameters of interest were the molecular cloud intensity, the molecular cloud gas. And this was thanks to ALMA, in that way, was uh, Alma observed the CO2 to one line, and also another parameter of interest were the star formation rate, thanks to Muse that observed the H alpha and H beta flux and line emissions. So one important thing that I want to mention is that um, um, nowadays, thanks to Muse and Alma, and especially the FANGs, is it possible to identify the H2 regions at resolution of 60 or 100 megaparsec, and also the H2 regions. So, <clears throat> first, after, um, before starting, um, this is the, yeah. Before uh, starting uh, to work with these images, these fang images, we did a pre-processing. Um, we use the original CO, H alpha, and H beta maps. Uh, each one of them is uh, has a, a error map. So what we did was uh, uh, we keep the emission above three times the error basically. Uh, we also corrected for dust extinction, the H alpha images. And one thing that is not in this plot is that we also uh, reprojected the images. So they both have the same pixels and the same sizes. So now we want to give an estimate for the um, galaxy average depletion time. And to do so, we need to perform some uh, conversions. So the first one I'm gonna start with, it's um, uh, we take the CO luminosity and we can convert this into a H2 surface density using the CO conversion factor. And specifically here, we um, adopted a um, value close to the Milky Way average. And then, um, well, for, for the um, H alpha luminosity that comes from H2 regions that are um, related to um, recent star formation, we can infer the star formation ray through this uh, conversion formula here. And so now that we have both the um, star formation rate, surface density, and H2 surface density maps, we can um, populate this uh, schmidt kennicott plane, where we have the molecular gas surface density on the x-axis, star formation rate surface density on the y-axis, 
And if we take the ratio of x over y, we get this estimate for the depletion time. And we see that all of our galaxies more or less lie on the on a almost constant one giga year depletion time. Right. So the previous plot showed the schmidt kennicutt relation for each of the objects integrated over the total area. But if we zoom in on one of the objects alone and plot the same values pixel by pixel, we see that there's a large amount of scatter in the values spanning a wide range in depletion times. And as we heard in Melanie's talk, it's not that there's a different depletion time in each region of the object, but instead we're probing different points in the lifetime of either the gas clouds or the stars. So to measure the star formation efficiency, we can't use this directly, and we instead need to talk about a different algorithm for measuring the lifetime of the clouds. Okay, so in case you had stopped paying attention, let's go back to the first equation. So now we have the depletion time, and we got this from our star formation rate, surface density, and molecular gas density, surface density maps. And from this, we were able to uh, plot the kennicott schmidt relation. And so now we need the uh, molecular cloud lifetime. So theoretically, you could use the free fall time um, but we used something else. Um, so the method that we used is called uh, Hessenberg code. So basically it's a code that um, is designed to uh, fit the observational data to find the time scale. And uh, basically you get to the, um, the map of the observational data and you convolve them and you use uh, like a um, parameter space to find the best fit. Uh, so our group uh, try five in uh, galaxies and uh, which has lifetime between seven to 20 million years. Um, and um, so like uh, the result um, on the bottom, on the bottom panel, uh, you can see that uh, it's uh, one example of the best fit as a Gaussian uh, distribution. So um, the on the left, it's uh, it's NGC 0628 um, galaxy uh, because it's with diffuse gas, which means we don't con we didn't consider the um, gas dispersion correction. So it's 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 not the best fit, and for the uh, the panels on the right is uh, galaxy NGC uh, 5068. Uh, it's without diffuse gas. So we find a more realistic um, time scale. So now we can put that all together. So from the first part of our talk, we found that the depletion time was about one giga year. And from the Heisenberg code, we found on average, roughly, that the GMC time scale is about 10 million years, which using our nice equation, gives us a star formation efficiency of 1%, which agrees with the literature. We did a good job. We win. Um, so through all this, we were able to estimate the star formation efficiency using the FANGS data, but it's not that simple. Of course, the problem is more difficult and we weren't able to explore everything, but you heard plenty this week. So we just wanna conclude by saying that we learned a lot of things like how to use FITS files, how to reduce the data from FANGS, how to use the Heisenberg code approximately, and how to work in this fun team. So with that, we'll say thank you, welcome any questions and say thanks for listening to all these presentations. So, questions for the awesome staff in the Haitian efficiency team. I'm not allowed to ask questions, so hence, please, audience. So why why is it that when you're adding the diffuse uh, stuff, the, the time scales are much longer? When you're adding the diffuse emissions, the time scans become much longer. But do you know why? Uh, uh, it's because uh, when we do, uh, with the diffuse gas, uh, we uh, because it's without correction, so we think that your gas is actually not forming the star. 
Um, so it's actually much longer, uh, but it's not realistic. It's, it shouldn't be the truth. Other questions? Well, it's been a long day and a long conference. So I'd like to say thank you to the Staff Motion Efficiency Team. And as chair, I just want to say thank you to all of you, right? You all gave amazing talks, right? This is all done in a week, so it's amazing work. Uh, and finally, I'd like to get everyone to give a round of applause to our wonderful organizers of this conference, especially Eric.